back on that. Thank you very much. We are back to live streaming, and I do have a motion and be moved by Mr. Ireland and seconded by Mr. Cameron. The people himself that Council of Corporation of the Village of America Warford is hereby rise and report for the in camera session of the regular council meeting with staff being given direction at 8 p.m. Any favor? Next on our agenda is uh, under planning, uh, saying that Neil Caldwell from JPPG a report with respect to the Maricopa Sewage Treatment Plant capacity. And I'll read the motion members. I uh, will recall this is one of the uh, uh, items that was uh, amended uh, in the approval of our agenda, and it's the amendment because of the uh, uh, the actual motion that was in the original package and, and what we were dealing with uh, here during the council meeting. So it was moved by Mr. Foster and seconded by Mr. Ireland. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hereby resolve that, whereas the Council of the Corporation of the Village of America Wolford does hereby receive the following documents from JP2G Consultants dated June the 24th, 2022, servicing assessment and capacity next steps. Uncommitted capacity calculation impacts, Maricopa sewage treatment plant, uncommitted reserve capacity update combined, and Maricopa infiltration and inflow report. And whereas council acknowledges that the village must maintain development on municipal services within, para within parameters set by the Ministry of the Environment, Conservation of Parks, NECP, and that NECP guidelines B 5 1. Calculation of uncommitted reserve capacity is a tool to allow the village and NECP to calculate the available capacity of the Maricopa Wastewater Treatment Plant, STP, to reduce the potential plant potential for plant flow exceedances and to plan for future expansions and or optimization and extraneous flow reduction. And be it therefore resolved that the council does approve in principle the recommendations in the report and direct staff to pursue implementing the recommendations as appropriate and be here therefore resolved that the council recognizes there are a number of infill development applications currently in the queue which will have an impact on the village sewage sdp sewage treatment plant capacity therefore each application for development within the urban area boundary of the village shall contain continue rather to be brought to council for consideration and decision on a case on a case by case basis and that will be a period full stop in motion so uh we do have joining us as indicated uh this evening uh, uh neil caldwell from jpcg and i'll just check with our deputy cook on uh yeah, three minutes. Yes. Yeah. You're just inviting them out of the waiting room. There you go. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening. sir. Uh, welcome. And uh, so a lot of uh, paperwork in the package. <laughs> so it's very appropriate to to be brought to council's attention, uh, particularly at this would be on the the first letter from uh, from you, June the twenty fourth. Outlining the uh, the five year 2017 to 2021, and then the, the three year should the province ever approve uh, three years, and a projection uh, again, that's a projection, and that's based on uh, some number of reports. So, I will just draw this to you to. Uh, if I may, Your Worship, and, and um, happy to have Mr. Caldwell answer any of your questions. I, what I have done in the order of the agenda package, there's a lot of material there, but I just wanted to make sure that uh, I'm, I'm not an engineer, so I don't want to interfere in the information that Mr. Calder wants to share with council and feels to be on, needs to be on the record. But the first two documents, I think, probably are the ones that council might most want to focus on. Of course, certainly uh, uh, defer to Mr. Caldwell if he feels otherwise, but I think those are the ones in my experience with council that you're probably most interested in right now. Yeah. And, and I think council is as well, because it's not just the, uh, we'll say that first chart on the first letter, but be the second one in terms of the uh, uh, recommendations to continue moving forward the way we have been doing the last 
uh, number of years and, and that is stopping infiltration so we're not treating groundwater but also underscores the the uh, not just the value but the merit of uh, building up our sewer treatment plant uh, reserves so we we have those dollars available to move forward with obviously care and consideration through, through the budget process uh, to move forward on the recommendations to uh, to have uh, sewage treatment plant capacity. Um, good evening, Mr. Calder. Give me your worship. Um, it's a little hard to hear you, so I, I'm not sure. Did you ask me to to just kind of summarize kind of where we're at? That would be great. Yes, and I do apologize if I'm not speaking uh, loudly enough, and, and I will put this out for one and all to hear. Uh, I do have uh, hearing aids that I'm getting used to, and uh, so I'm still in the process of, <laughs> without any laughing, I too can hear myself speak better than I could before without my hearing aids. So when I think I am speaking loudly, it's because of my hearing aids, and, and so I will raise my voice. It almost seems like yelling to me, uh, but it's better volume, and I'm getting nods from all my colleagues, and I'm sure you as well, Mr. Uh, Mr. Caldwell. So, yes, if you could walk through the highlights and just, uh, you know, I, I guess in essence explain, uh, you know, uh, the, the merit of uh, seeing that chart of where we may be, uh, you know, by the end of uh, 2023 in terms of uh, plant capacity, but uh, and of particular merit and value are the recommendations that you outlined in your and uh, your second letter of June the 24th. Okay, well, I'll, I'll run through the letters uh, one at a time, just for ease of uh, following uh, following along, and then when if there's any questions, just let me know as we uh, as we go along if that's suitable. Yes, thank you. Okay, so um, I think as everyone, well, hopefully everyone's aware at the table that the the 2017 flows from the sewage plant were that went through the sewage plant were quite high, so they've been skewing the average numbers that are used in calculating the uncommitted reserve capacity for the plant. So um, we're still in 2022, we're still in that five-year window. So the first calculation um, in the chart on page one of the letter that I believe is at the top of your package um, with the three lines, the five-year 2017, three-year 2019, and the five-year 2018 projected. That first line is the, is the is the calculation based on the parameters of how it's calculated by the ministry and, and how you would submit that form. Uh, we did talk to the ministry about a three-year average uh, two years ago, uh, never really got a response to that. So we've just carried through and, and showed that number for comparative purposes. And then the last line, the five-year 2018 to 2022 projection is if we got an average flow in the plant, same as the last four years, so 2018, 19, 2021. Uh, then at the end of 2022, when you fill out the form for 2023, you're going to have an average flow of 561.5 cubic meters a day. So it just gives you some context of, of the, how the numbers can adjust based on the flows that you, you have through the plant. Thank you. I have a question for Mr. Foster. Yeah, on that first page, uh, under the second graph at the bottom of the first page, five-year projection, 78.7 remaining capacity times 1.41 or divided by 1.41 per connection. So the remaining connections of 55.8. Then you have connections committed at 29 and they're mm -hmm. added together to give total remaining connection. I don't follow how our volume, like it's sort of like you've calculated how many connections we have, how many we're committed to and this, should they not be subtracted instead of added? Uh, I guess in reality, yes, but the, the number in the top form is, is based on the form and the form extracts the committed capacity before you do the calculation. So I just added it back in. Okay. So, so the, the, the number at the top okay. in the top graph or in the top chart, that's the calculation rate from the form and the form has in it the you include the the number that you've already committed. The twenty nine is already in that number. I got you. So the fifty five. So so the eighty four point eight is is it's a bit misleading for me. I understand. So that's the yep. total number of connections. However, we've got twenty nine already out. So the actual number is fifty five point eight. Okay. Thank you. 
Yes, because what I wanted to do in the summary was also include the Conway lands in the calculation. So in the yellow part of the of the table at the end, that that's basically saying if you count your uh, uncommitted and you're committed, you have this much left, and then you start subtracting the calculations from there. So that's how that that number comes out. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So I guess the next one then, Mr. Caldwell, would be your uh, recommend, you know, recommendations. Okay, so that's the uh, the second letter in your package with the with you're looking at now, correct? For me, your worship, it's the next steps document. Yep. Okay. Just want to make sure I'm talking about the same letter. Um, okay. Yeah. So basically. Uh, we completed the first stage of the um, of the infl inflow and infiltration um, report, and we got a lot of good information from our flow monitoring, also from monitoring at the plant. And um, the municipality has been been very good at uh, doing some um, camera work in the sewers, and then doing some uh, some repairs to try and reduce the amount of infiltration and, and inflow and uh, it, it, it certainly looks like we've had some success based on the on the volume of, of flow going into the plant. Um, that's a good start. Um, but once you get to a point where you're you're nearing the capacity of your plant, uh, you want to you want to start looking at not just how you're going to address those issues, but also how you're going to allow for your future development and how you're going to control it. So. Uh, one of those, one of the ways of doing that is to uh, do an infrastructure master plan, and it talks about it in the attached document, the uh, the D five planning document from the ministry that uh, kind of outlines some of the requirements and some of the suggestions on how to proceed to make sure that the, the municipality is managing their their assets. Um, the second bullet, the CCTV of the Main Street sanitary sewer, so. Uh, Pretty well, all the other sewers, sanitary sewers have been been videoed and the areas where there was uh, um, evident infiltration and inflow, the uh, I think most of those areas have been addressed. Uh, the main street portion is essentially almost underwater. Uh, the camera the camera is not sitting right at the top of the the little robot that goes through. so, you can't really tell what the condition of that main street sewer is other than it's it's quite full of sewage which one would expect based on it being the main uh, pipe going uh, handling the sewage through town so um it's also a very important sewer if something were ha to happen to it so in order to actually assess it you would need to essentially empty it out to be able to see what kind of condition it's in and once you see what kind of condition it's in, you can look at it and determine whether you can leave it. It's in good condition or it could be lined, which would be ideal rather than trying to dig it up based on, on the depth and, and where it is in the, in the middle of town. So it's um, we've got a price from a CCTV contractor that to go and, and do that. And what they would have to do is basically uh, put in a pump upstream of the area and bypass the sewage. So pump the sewage uh, through a hose over overland down to a receiving manhole. I think it was three uh, three sections down, and then repeat that until they got to towards the uh, the lift station. So it's uh, it's something to consider. Um, we've we've shown we've noted it there, and uh, I think it'd be a, a good idea to, to find out what kind of condition that sewer is in. Uh, a few minor improvements in, on some of the manholes, and then there's a little area down on uh, St. Lawrence um, or in John Street, just down by the RV pump station that uh, that wouldn't hurt to have a look at as well. Looked like there might be some infiltration in there. So a few minor things in there. And then uh, the St. Lawrence uh, Main Street, we, we did notice there's a lot of uh, variation in flow there, which could mean either a roof leader or uh, or some pump connections in that area. So if you're going to look in an area for those connections, that would be an area we would suggest. And then we get to the sewage plant itself and uh, what you could let look at there rather than trying to do a, a full, um, full um, 
expansion is look at uh, look at the components and see if you might be able to optimize some of the components to gain some capacity in order to address any shortfalls that may occur. So, thank you. Is there any uh, questions on, in terms of uh, the recommendations and, and essentially the, the motion at the end? There's a lot of, as Mr. Roberts said, a lot of, uh, I'll say, engineering technical detail in the background, but the sum and substance is uh, it, paints a, it paints a good picture of what we have done, but also the opportunities uh, as, as outlined in terms of recommendations to not be treating stuff that we shouldn't be treating and optimize our, our capacity. It's, it's uh, not to be over simplistic, but it's uh, it paints a pretty easy path forward. And and, uh, and it's not just from the development point of view, dealing with the things on a case by case basis, but also on the, the budget cycle point of view. Here, here's an opportunity for a uh, project to be having any reserve or not. And, uh, we finance uh, uh, the, uh, the outlined recommendations to move uh, forward. Mr. Ryder. Yeah, um, very good report from an engineering perspective. Methodology is uh, looks very good and the recommendations, I can't disagree with anything there. Uh, one question though, something I didn't see in the report was that if we were to reduce the inflows down to a level that uh, is more reasonable and what, uh, I, I can't remember that what it was called now. Um, there's a number that, there was like a target number for average inflows per capita or something like that. If we were to achieve that number, what would our um, new connect, uncommitted connections potential be? Do you hear the uh, question, Mr. Uh, Carlo? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, we haven't done that calculation. The, the challenge with uh, dealing with inflow and infiltration is it's you really don't know if you've been effective until you run through a, a cycle or two because what can happen is you can you can push the you can push the repair or the problem for lack of a better word downstream so you might fix one area and it means that the the groundwater table rises in another area and that sump pump is then putting out more flow into it so we could do the calculation um, I don't, it wouldn't be one that you would be able to use in discussion with the ministry other than you could figure out that that would be, that would be what you would like to remove from the system. Any other questions? Mr. Cameron. Just a quick question. You, Mr. Caldwell, you had mentioned uh, uh, in the beginning of your report that we've, uh, we've made some increase in the volume uh, availability within the plant to some of the measures that we've taken over, uh, over the course of the last few years. Uh, do you have any numbers on, uh, on exactly what capacity increase we have achieved with our, uh, our initiatives that we put in place? Uh, I a yes and no. It's again, this is not an exact number because it, it has a lot to do with how much rainfall you get, uh, what kind of snow melts in that. But if you, uh, and I'm not sure what page it's on because I, I just printed the document, but uh, one of the letters that has the calculations of the, um, the capacity, uncommitted reserve capacity, they'll be towards the, the middle. There's a couple of there's a chart in there that has the years and the average influent and the peak influent. Mr. Robertson, if I may, so that's the third document uh, in the section of the package. It's got the color chart in the beginning, the, the line chart. Yeah. So, right here. so yeah. it's it would yeah. be right at the back. It would be at the back of that document behind the D5 document. Without uh, knowing that the number, uh, uh, maybe explicitly, as uh, Mr. Cameron said, that we have captured some some increased capacity. That's, that's I assume it's a fair statement. But in terms of uh, that five-year average that the, uh, the ministry is looking at, that's that's goes to that uh, chart on the very first page. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So in twenty in twenty twenty one, the average daily flow was 473 cubic meters per day and the peak was 1635 which is 
uh, on the average, it's lower than what you've seen. And on the peak, it's, it's, it's relatively low. So um, again, it's one year. So that's part of why they suggest or they require you to look at five years because you can't have that fluctuation in, in, um, in rainfall and, uh, and intensity. So it's, uh, it's certainly a good sign that it's gone down, but again, you've got to look at it kind of on a longer term average. Any questions from uh, Mr. Cameron? Yeah, just, uh, yeah, uh, the reason why I asked the question is when I was going through the report, you had indicated that, you know, we, we had made some headway. I just wanted to know if we had specific numbers to it. There's a lot of charts with a lot of different numbers. So one seems to, um, uh, to be a positive, one seems to, uh, you know, put kind of some kind of a challenge moving forward as we develop. So um, I just wanted to ensure that uh, our efforts that we've put in place over the last couple of years uh, have actually um, uh, moved to a positive uh, in our efforts, uh, you know, with uh, in respect to uh, dumping unnecessary uh, fluid into that system through uh, sub pumps and so on and so forth. So uh, I guess our efforts that we've done over the last few years has resulted in uh, us uh, gaining some capacity. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Yeah, so just assurances that we have sufficient capacity to handle Merrickville Grove. Merrickville Grove is always already in the calculation. That's why it doesn't show up on the chart because it was already committed. So because we actually have the, we have all the plans and we've got the details on that. So we, I just took that right out of the calculation. Okay, so. So that leaves us in a state where we should probably be very, very cautious about any further R2 development, lot splitting, additional lots being uh, created within the service area. Well, uh, yes, you, you definitely want to be cautious just because you're, you're in that range of having, uh, you're, you're getting close to your capacity limits. Um, the, I think if you look at the information Kind of as a whole, and then as a, as a council decide how you want to proceed. It's it's a, it's a different discussion based on the five year average this year versus the five year average next year. But there is always the possibility you could get another another challenging year like twenty seventeen. But uh, that's part of the planning documentation that that we've included there is to say, well, it, all you can do is you you plan it out and you figure out how you're going to address any. Uh, any situations that arise. Just for our moving forward for this council, it, it's stated in the, in the motion in front of us that we'll look at each application on a case-by-case -case basis. Correct. But for this council, we'd be best to avoid, as I say, we get pressure from uh, people within the village who have a double lot or sorry about a single lot that want to split it, et cetera. And then this will add a lot to the uh, if, if it's permitted and with the changes that the province is kicking for. I'm also wondering about um, again, I hope I'm not digressing too far, but with the changes coming down from the province regarding additional dwelling units within existing structures, that's going to add more stress onto our uh, sewage treatment plan as well. So I'm just wondering whether we should be considering putting a moratorium on that within the service part of the village as well until we can prove exactly what our capacity is until after Miracle Grove has come online as well, before we permit any more, whether it's R2 development or densification of existing lots. Any comment, Mr. Provo? Do I have any comment? Well, that, I guess that would be something for, for council for to council consider for at another meeting and, and uh, whether it's uh, Specifically dealing with a moratorium, uh, and that there there are perhaps pros and cons in that, but at the minimum, we're, you know, everything is on a case by case basis. And so, and ultimately, we all wonder as as councillors and people who are responsible at the table, what is the liability to the municipality? A first off, if we sell sewage treatment capacity we don't have, or rather permit construction. Also, if thousands and thousands of liters of untreated sewage end up going into the river during a 2017 type rain event. What is our, what is the village's risk exposure here? What is the opportunity that they would have either to be sued by a contractor, of course, if you, we don't have the capacity or would the MOE come in and, and uh, 
and institute some sort of a fine. Well, if, yeah, if it's two parts to the president's camera, yeah. Again, we, you know, with this motion on the table, case by case, it does come down to even if it's a lot, you know, they uh, would are one at the moment wanting enough. If we can, we have the ability to say no because we don't have the capacity. That's number one. And I think um, Mr. Caldwell may speak to, you know, on any sewage treatment plan, if, if you have a, and I would forget the term, but uh, um, overflow event, <laughs> have a, an overflow event, yeah. What, you know, what is that circumstance where? Uh, I, I'm not a lawyer, so I wouldn't want to get into the, the legal ramifications on you. Um, I mean, an exceedance is essentially an exceedance is essentially you've you've uh, gone past the parameter of what the treatment um, that's required from the plant in terms of of different like turbidity and and different uh, components. So uh, I don't think you'd be in a case of a lot of it wouldn't be really sewage it would be an exceedance of a parameter in the uh, in the outflow so um to the chase we, we we would not be in a circumstance where we'd be putting raw sewage into the uh, the reno river uh, i think you would have to get something to break in order for that to happen um because it's no, because it's got to go if it, if it gets to the plant it's got to go through the plant and the plant has as a treatment capability. So it would be, it would have to not really get to the plant, I think, in order for that to occur. I think I was just asking for a worst case scenario. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. want to say final comment, but uh, yeah, yeah. We'll speak to the state of the motion and the recommendations, Mr. Cameron. Yeah, I just wanted to add on to what uh, Councillor Foster had uh, uh, been talking about. You know, in the report, uh, uh, Neil, you can correct me if I'm wrong. There's a lot of information here, but I uh, believe the capacity is at 80%, and then we have to take into consideration on how we're going to move forward the uh, plant. And it indicates that you know what we've already committed to is bringing us up to 70, 76%. And you know, should we go forward, you know, is putting ourselves in with the rest of these infill lots, like uh, Councillor Foster is saying, you know, if, if we do allow some splitting and and further development, uh, I think there is one page in here that said that we have a potential of hitting 98%. So it would put us over the 8% capacity. So I think uh, caution as we move forward is, is something that we should be considering uh, uh, definitely in regards to the sewage plant. Thank you. Nardi, any other questions on the motion? I'll call the motion, all in favor. And that is carried, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Caldwell. Um, I just want to check on our agenda. Uh, that side was a consent application, and I know KP2 uh, is involved with that. Is that Mr. Caldwell or would that be our consultant planner uh, for Simon? That'd be Mr. Simon, your worship. So, please. Welcome to the radio. Mr. Caldwell, thank you very much for your attendance uh, this evening. And, uh, and as Mr. Uh, Iron indicated a very good report, uh, well, uh, a lot of mythology in there, man, it's greatly appreciated. Thank you, sir. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Now, can you be quiet? Uh, no, Forbes is in the meeting now. Oh, he's in the meeting. Okay, great. Uh, good evening, uh, Forbes Simon. Welcome. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, gentlemen, we are under uh, still under planning, and it's a consent application. And I do have a motion I'll put on the table uh, for council uh, to consider, and then we'll uh, hear and get the report attached. And we'll hear from uh, Mr. Uh, Sir Forbes Summit and our uh, manager of community development, Stacey Lloyd, is with us as well. I believe she is in the waiting room as well, Your Worship. We might just want to invite her to join us. Oh, there we go. I, I think she may just have her camera turned yeah, off. Yeah, she, she's unmuted, though. Oh, great. There we go. Welcome, Stacey. Nice to see you. Thank so, you very much. I'll, I'll put the uh, motion on the, on, the, on the table, moved by Mr. Iron and seconded by Mr. Foster. The interior by resolve that the Council of the Corporation of the Village of America Wolford does hereby receive planning report from Forbes Simon and JP2G Consultants, Inc., dated June the 22nd, 2022. With respect to consent application B 71 22, 
and municipal consent application questionnaire form for information purposes. And that the Council of the Corporation of the Village of America Wolford does, does hereby receive the draft development agreement regarding consent application B 71 21, naming Don Elizabeth Fluitt and James Stephen Fluitt as party of the first part and the Corporation of the Village of America Wolford as party of the second part. And whereas Council passed resolution R 179 21 on June the 28th, 2021, recommending deferral of the consent application B-71-21 to the consent granting authority until satisfactory completion of an, of an aggregate impact assessment, an official plan amendment, and an environmental impact statement, EIS, all of which have been completed satisfactory. And now, therefore, be resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the, sorry, now be hereby resolved that Council does hereby recommend support of consent application B-71-21 to the consent granting authority with the following standard conditions. One, that the applicant deposit a copy of the registered reference plan with the village clerk. And two, that the applicant pay all outstanding taxes, if any, to the village. And three, that the applicant pay the necessary cash in lieu of the parkland fee to the village. In addition to the following conditions, one, that the applicant enter into a development agreement with the village implementing the recommendations of the EIS and be registered on title of the subject lands for Schedule A of the development agreement and the land registry office at the sole expense of the owner, and whereby council does hereby direct the mayor and the CAO to execute the development agreement as may be amended upon final review by village staff and or village lawyer with respect to consent application B-71-21. So having put the motion on the floor, I'm not sure whether uh, Stacy Lloyd and or uh, or Simon is speaking, but I'll, I'll turn it over to the two of you. Good evening, thank you. Do you want to start? Sure. Yeah, okay. Um, thanks very much, Mayor. Um, this application you've seen um, many times now over the last couple of years. Um, it was originally deferred because the lands were in an aggregate designation. Uh, the county has now approved official plan amendment number one. Um, one of the things I'd like to, to make sure Council's aware of is that the last day of appeal for OPA number one is uh, July 4th. So there is an outside potential that there could be an appeal in the next week or so. However, there were no comments or concerns during the, the application, so an appeal is highly unlikely. But there isn't always an outside chance. There was also an environmental impact study done because of the woodland features on the property. Uh, there are a number of recommendations that came out of that. Um, and that is why there's one of the conditions, Mayor, is for a development agreement to be able to implement the recommendations of the EIS. Other than that, sir, it's, it's a good application. It's been through the planning process in spades and um, I think that we're in a position now to be able to look at the application favorably. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Before we go to Council on that, uh, anything uh, from your perspective to add, uh, Stacey Lloyd? Thank you very much, uh, Mayor Shaw. There's no, I have nothing to add. Any questions from members of Council? None indicated. You have the heard the motion, so I'll call the vote. All in favor? Madam Chair. Thank you very much. I'm uh, particularly uh, thankful to uh, Stacy and Forbes for uh, I guess I would say shepherding this through, working with the the applicant applicant over a couple of years, and uh, ensuring all the T's and I's were appropriately. Uh, Dotted in, in the right sequence and, and a successful application. Clearly, uh, as was passed in the evening. So, again, thank you very much, uh, Forbes and Stacey. Have a good evening. Very much. Our, our agenda.
for the minutes of our uh, June meeting. So we move by Mr. Cameron and seconded by Mr. Ireland. As you know, so that the Council of Appropriation of the Village of American Warford does hereby approve the minutes of the regular meeting of June 13th, 2022, as circulated. Unless there are any errors and or omissions, none order from members of Council. I'll call the vote. All in favor to approve that circulated. Ms. Carey, thank you. Uh, moving along in our uh, agenda, we have a report from our party public regarding the Green Center for Council's information. So we move by Mr. Foster and seconded by Mr. Cameron. We hereby resolve that the Council of the Corporation of the Village of Merrick Wolford is hereby receive report FD 01 2022 for information. And the Council approve the recommendation to the report for approving center station. Mr. Uh, sorry, is Chief uh, Cole with us this evening? We do, Your Worship. He's in the waiting room, and I'm sure he'll turn on his camera momentarily. Thank you. And I see the report is from, I guess, indeed, our uh, Vice Chief and our CAO. So, uh, Mr. Robert, just speak first, and then over to Mr. Cole, Chief Cole. Um, I, I'll just introduce Your Worship, just a thought that you know, not much happens in our municipality without team involvement in this. and. Um, as you know, this has been a focus for council and I think the community for quite some time. Um, Chief Cole has done a very good job on this report, uh, recognizing some difficulties that we've had just technically with the building and so forth. And, and I think everybody's eager to have this put into place for the community. Um, and uh, I'll just turn it over to Chief Cole if he has any further comments. But... Good evening, Chief. Over to you, sir. Uh, good evening, Your Worship and uh, Council. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to this. Um, I'll just be brief and uh, just kind of highlight the report quickly. Um, it, it has been noted that we uh, would benefit from the cooling station with the kind of extreme weather we've been having over the last couple of years with the, uh, the high humidity. And, and uh, so we thought it would be very beneficial to uh, have uh, this cooling station available for the public and residents. Um, the report pretty much speaks to uh, to all the areas of uh, that I you know wanted to um, bring to your attention. So I think it'd be best if I just uh, answered any questions that the council may have uh, about the report or the policy, Your Worship. Thank you very much. Any questions from members of the council, Mr. Cameron? Uh, no questions on uh, uh, Mr. Cole's report. Just perhaps an observation that uh, maybe Mr. Uh, Robertson may want to uh, uh, address is that when we do um, rent out the property, uh, as, uh, as uh, Chief Cole had uh, indicated in his uh, summary here, that circumstances may arise that we may have to cancel uh, an already booked uh, community center. So uh, I was just wondering if, uh, you know, that it would be. Uh, uh, warranted for us to put that in the the lease agreement with who's ever leasing that so that they're not caught by surprise and all of a sudden you know like we have to close this because we have a heat event and they get a little upset that uh, you know their 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 party or what have you has been cancelled but I mean if it's in the lease agreement and you know we make them aware that there's a possibility during extreme uh, weather events that the, you know there there is that possibility they may have to reschedule. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councilor Mr. Three, you. Certainly, we can add that to that. We also have um, we look at, at attaching a copy of this to to two things, if you like. Although, you know, in the winter time, doesn't make a lot of sense to attach a cooling report to to a lease. But we can certainly make sure that that's included in the, in the form. So, thank you. Mr. Just to follow on Mike's uh, <clears throat> suggestion, you could just put in extreme weather event. Yeah. In the event, you know, if in the occurrence of an extreme weather event that the uh, municipal building is required as a shelter, whether for extreme heat or power failure or whatever, that someone's agreement could be canceled. I think it's a good idea to have that in there. Yeah, good, just so the points, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Captures just that and include that. It's, especially with the generator in there now, et cetera. Somebody might just decide, I can get married even without the power because they have a generator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so back to, back to the uh, uh, recommendation in terms of the Center, any other questions? No. Um, I just note uh, that it's only proposed to be open during the week. 
and not on the weekends when we could potentially have a lot of people in town for various events and a uh, higher a much higher risk of someone uh, getting heat stroke, et cetera. So I wonder if there's been any thought put into that. And Somebody thought I thought that was captured in the yeah. Yeah. There is here in terms of being a downtown on the weekend. It is, Your Worship. There is, there is just a recognition that in evenings and weekends through you, um, that it may be necessary for the fire chief to open the cooling center in the evenings because we just wanted to make sure council aware is that there would be overtime costs for a number of four hours per occasion so it would be potentially a use expression potentially quotation where it's 24 7. It, it, as needed, I, I, yeah. Yeah, as needed yes. typically the hotter we the way i believe the fire chief and i looked at this when we discussed it was just that it's during the day that usually the heatest event the hottest day will occur hottest events occur um, so that could happen certainly on a weekend and um and the fire chief would be watching weather reports to make sure that that that, that need is addressed as as, as necessary. Okay. Thank you. There isn't anything else. Thank you very much, Chief. And then thank you, Mr. Roberts. And I'll call the vote. All in favor. That's carried. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Your Worship. Mr. Roberts. Thank you. I just want to say thank you for the questions. So I think they're valid questions. Appreciate it. Yeah. Have a report regarding our uh, uh, building fees, and I'll put the motion on the table. So, moved by Mr. Ireland, seconded by Mr. Foster. You hereby resolve that the Council of the Corporation of the Village of America Wolford is hereby received report CBO 01 to the Chief Building Officials CBO report on building fee amendment. And the Council does hereby direct staff to proceed with the building fee amendment process. As recommended in the building department report CBO 01 2022, in accordance with the Building Code Act. And I understand that in the waiting room is our uh, building official, uh, Dan Halliday. But I'll, before that, I'll, Mr. Robertson. Thank you, Your Worship. So, um, um, as you know, any fee based service that a municipality offers has to be operated essentially revenue neutral. It can have and flow each year. Um, and that's required municipal act. There's also a provision that um, the uh, chief building official can tell you about in, and, and is referred to in the report about the Building Code Act of Ontario as well, requiring that. So uh, what I asked the chief building official to do is to look at our fees, look at our budget and our costs, and to come back with council to realign us with the legislative requirements. And, and also uh, he's done a very nice job in picking some other municipalities as comparators just to see what others are are doing and make sure that we're aligned with that. But but certainly I'm happy to uh, yeah. defer to the chief building. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, Dan, and uh, thank you for joining us. And I greatly appreciate the report. I'm not sure if you want to speak to the report. Uh, I, there may be questions from uh, members of council as well. Good evening, Mayor. Council, thank you. Uh, you can hear me well? Yes, thank you very much. Oh, okay. Um, so, just a little, a, a little brief background, and it does mention it a bit in the report. Um, so back in, in 2005, um, it mentions that we had some average inspections for dwellings was uh, around eight inspections um, and four for accessory buildings. As the years have gone by, um, we've, we've got a new building code in 2006, another one in 2012. Um, so with the new building codes, we also got more and more uh, restrictive um, as, as we've gone along. And with those restrictions, it requires more inspections. More inspections means more time out on the road, more time spent on plan review, uh, uh, things like that. Um, so in, for example, I guess in, uh, in 2005, we had eight options for insulating a building. Um, then here we are, say, even in 2016, there was over 200 options for insulating a building, just different combinations of things uh, might not put as much R value in insulation, but you're up in the U value in your windows, or you're up in the the, the efficiency of your furnace and your hot water tank to make up that, that extra. And, and there's all kinds of different combinations. We have in-floor heating as well, which we take into play and 
uh, now we're, we're using ICF blocks. So basically what it boils down to, as we've gone throughout the years, inspections increase, plan reviews get more precise, um, and it, it's, it eats up more time for sure. Um, sometimes you gotta make four or five extra trips because people now, uh, I've found, they're insulating their walls, but they don't do the ceiling. So <laughs> then you gotta make another trip for an insulation inspection. Um, or they, they haven't got their ICF or their, um, sorry, their spray foam insulation done at the same time as the others. Um, so just all these little things add up. Um, so really our, our fees, um, when I look at them, are, are rather low compared to other municipalities that uh, I've compared them to. And I, I tried to pick municipalities that had the same fee based system as we did, or as we do, um, just so it gives us a better comparison. Um, and as you can see, um, some of them have uh, uh, development fees, some of them don't in the chart that I, or the table that I've, I've provided you. So I, I did, a, I did a, a line there without any development fees and without, uh, uh, lot fees, as we call them, and you can see we're 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 down near the lower. Uh, well, we are the lowest of them all. And I did a proposed uh, fee base in the first line, and the second line is actually what we're charging now. Um, but then when you go down to the total fee at the bottom, that is with the lot fees or the the development fees added on. Um, so definitely with the, the, the lot fee that we charge, it does bring us up uh, a little more medium with, with the rest of the, the municipalities there. Um, and, and in saying that, and I, I, I know I'm new here and it, it, uh, it takes me a bit to, to find a few things, but um, we, we don't have um, a building without a permit fee, which, I, 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 I have found in the past that it can be a good deterrent to get people to come get a building permit. Um, the, it, I don't know how to <laughs> kind of how to explain it, but it, if people realize that they're, they're, they're going to have to pay that fee if they get caught. And I know some people, it doesn't really matter to them, uh, but it, you set that fee there, it, it brings the people in, the more they come in, you have to understand this, you don't always catch the people. Um, sometimes you do, uh, most of the time they're, they're complaint driven, um, but this is a good deterrent, especially if the word gets out that, oh, I had to pay this extra because um, other people may not want to do that. And with the rising costs of everything, who wants to pay extra money if they don't have to? Um, also, I, I, I feel that our, our uh, demolition fees are rather low. Um, we have a demolition fee for a residential in our, our bylaws for 30 bucks. And if it's commercial or industrial, it's $50. Um, I would like to see us raise that up. Uh, and bring us in line somewhat with the with the other municipalities and raise it to a, to a hundred dollars. Um, and so with the the uh, what I'm proposing, uh, we could expect to increase somewhere between five thousand and twenty thousand dollars a year, and that's based on fluctuation fluctuations of projects and and the value of the projects as well. Um, and I guess. Other than that, if anybody has any questions, I'd, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate the report and in particular the uh, the chart where you're uh, looking at, we'll say, similar kinds of municipalities, bit of an urban area, rural area. And that's greatly appreciated. And, and it, it surely shows that uh, not only were we significantly lower, but this is uh, bringing us up, but not being the leader in the pack at the same time. So that's appreciated uh, having that picture. Uh, go to uh, members of council, any questions from members of council? Not seeing any, I'll call the vote. All in favor.
Done. Usually a good sign of, a, of an excellent report when uh, members of council do not have any questions. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Halliday. Hey, the, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. And thank you. No, uh, so these fees do not come in uh, to place. No, we'll say effective immediately. Oh. There is that, uh, that second uh, part of the uh, motion. Uh, there is a, a process uh, that the municipality would go, go through, which is. Uh, which will unfold in due course. Correct, Your Worship. Yep. And, and, um, oh, Mr. Halliday. Yes, go ahead, sir. So, sorry, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I never touched on that. So the, the uh, Building Code Act actually requires us to have a public meeting, to hold a public meeting before uh, any fees uh, can be amended and put into place. That would be a side function to, uh, to have that public meeting? Yes. So, and and I believe in the bottom of my my um, report, it says that uh, that the clerk give notice of a public meeting to present the proposed changes uh, to the building permit fees, and then following the public meeting, council will consider the bylaw to amend the fees. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anything further needs to be added? Nope, that's fine. Thank you. Well, well done. Well done. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a. Uh, this is again is a, an amended uh, item as noted uh, when we passed our agenda uh, regarding the um, extension for the uh, for uh, Rogers. So it will be moved by Mr. Cameron and seconded by Mr. Ireland. Be hereby resolved that. Whereas in June 13th, 2022, the Council of Appropriation of the Village of Maricopa Wolford approved Resolution R 176 22, granting Rogers a one year extension on the letter of concurrence for the wireless communication site C6508 in Jasper. And whereas Rogers has clarified that they need a total of a three year extension, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Village of America Wolford approves an additional extension for the letter of concurrence until November the 23rd, 2024. Robinson, Robinson. Very busy through you, Worship. So just a little bit of confusion and communication between myself and Rogers. Yeah. Um, they mentioned they were looking for extension. I heard one year. Um, they need three years. So council's already approved the one-year extension, which takes it to November of 2022. Um, and I understand from them, it's actually 2024 they were looking for. So I just, it, rather than going back and going through a process of reconsideration, which, which is more challenging, uh, I just added, added the, two, the extra time to it to take it to where they were actually asking. Okay. Any questions from members of council? Mr. Foster, you had your hand up, I think. No, nope. nope. just wondering what the 2023 on the yeah. resolution. No, I was just going to ask, I just maybe a clarification, it might have been a clerical error, but on the resolution it says 2023 on, on, on ours. Okay. Yes, it's correct. And that was the amendment we did at the beginning of the meeting in the beginning of the meeting to 2024. Okay. As it was we amended our. It was a long time ago. It so was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> so is everybody's on the ball. So if there are any other questions, so I'll call the vote all in favor. That's scary. Thank you. If you were to that, the Council of the Corporation of the Village of Mark Wolford does here by receive report CAO 04 2022 Environmental Initiatives for Information Purposes. Thank you, Worship. It, it, this was in result response to a council directive at, at direction at the last meeting. And uh, I just want to reiterate again, this isn't a comprehensive report. I just wanted to, I was asked to give council a, a sense of some of the initiatives and um, just note that you know when staff are working on things, we're thinking of several different community values and corporate values, of course. So one is being frugal with taxpayers' money, of course. Um, the other was keeping the environment in the back of our minds. So uh, we don't always express that as clearly as perhaps we should, um, and that's something I noted in here, and perhaps an opportunity for awareness building over time. And this report will hopefully help with that. Okay, thank you. Uh, so I did that. Sorry, I called the motion uh, in terms of uh, receiving the report for information purposes. It is all in favor. 
think I have to share it with you on that. Under correspondence, uh, we do have a uh, uh, request. Uh, the first one is uh, local public schools, so we moved by Mr. Foster, and second by Mr. Cameron. We hereby resolve that the Council of the Corporation of the Village of America, Wolford, is hereby receive correspondence from Veronica Daniel, Danielle, requesting that the use of the community center to be donated for the annual Maricopa Public School Christmas Luncheon, and the council does hereby approve the request. And as I said, it's their annual luncheon, and I think it'll be the first time in three years that they've been able to have a uh, Christmas gathering at, at our community center. Unless there are any questions, I'll call the vote. All in favor? I'm sure that everyone is uh, on the list of people who have requested this, but greatly uh, appreciate your as possible after the uh, capacity of both. Absolutely, Your Worship. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, the next one, so it's moved by Mr. Cameron and second by Mr. Ireland. We hereby resolve that the Council of the Corporation of the Village of America Wolford does hereby receive correspondence from Judy Carroll requesting that the fee for the rental of the community center on August 9th, 2022, be waived for the international plow match and plow match 2022. And the council does hereby approve the request. If you have any questions, I'll call the vote. All in favor? And that too. Thank you. By Mr. Ireland and second by Mr. Foster. We hereby resolve that the Council of Corporation of the Village of America Wolford is hereby receive correspondence from Lori McIntosh Belanger requesting that the fee for the rental of the community center of June 16th, 2022, be waived for the Ecole Saint Marguerite Bourgeau School Graduation and Achievement Awards. And the Council does hereby approve the request. And uh, while well, this is in the uh, previously been used, uh, the uh, school was planning their uh, graduation on that date, and if you recall the weather, uh, there were severe thunderstorms, mm -hmm. they were eventually going to be outside, and for the safety of the children, they moved inside, and so uh, that's why the, the late request for the ways in their fees. If there are any questions, all that, I'll call the vote. Is that all? Merci. Mayor? Mr. Foster. But I was hoping if this is a proper time where I could bring it up, whether we could have a discussion with staff or get staff to research. Do we keep track of the number of times that we waive fees? I'm not speaking in opposition to waiving fees, it's more of an accounting thing. Do we keep track of the number of times that we waive fees, what the total loss of revenue is over the course of the year, and how that reflects on the community center budget? Mm -hmm. Because it is it does belong to the community. I'm certainly in favor of nonprofits having an opportunity. Or as we all know, there's methods of accounting that can perhaps reflect better what we're giving the community with it. Eventually people are, you know, you look at the net on the community center, I'm sure it's horrible. And every time we give it away for free, it gets worse. Mm -hmm. uh, also we have questions about insurance for, uh, if I have a wedding there and I was, because I'm having alcohol or whatever, but I have to purchase event insurance, are these events covered under event insurance as well? Or is it necessary? So, second question. <laughs> and uh, oh, sorry, didn't mean. Yeah. Right. The final question, and this doesn't necessarily revolve around rental of the community center. Is there a water meter at the community center? And does the village pay for sewer and water for the community center? Do they pay for sewer and water for the rink house? Does the village pay for sewer and water for the park lines park? It's this, they both they have washrooms there. There's also a dumping station. And they have water throughout the complex. It's, however these are accounted for, it is not fair for the people that pay for the sewage treatment plant to be paying for that as well. So if the village wants to pay for its own water, I know the fire hall doesn't have a meter, mm -hmm. for example, and the fire department is assessed a water rate annually. It's just an average, a figure they pulled out of the hat, I think, but it's $10,000 a year. That's what I'm not certain of the number, but. Fire department pays for that water in recognition of the fact that, yeah, they use a lot of water. Mm -hmm. And it should be borne, that sort of a usage should be borne by the entire municipality and not just the service area. And particularly in terms of the use of sewage treatment, et cetera, there's 
two washrooms, four washrooms at the community center, plus an industrial kitchen, plus, et cetera. I'm not sure are there, are there any other source of water use there or not, but you can certainly see that be a significant, you have a 200 person event in that place, that would be the equivalent of how many households, how many months. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm just asking that we could explore that and whether or not we can do uh, cost recovery. I know we're taking it out of one pocket, but it's a much bigger pocket that we're taking it out of rather than just having the people who pay for the sewage treatment plant pay for that. Mr. Robertson has captured the, the questions and uh, can bring that information back to the uh, council. I, I really appreciate yeah. I believe uh, it would be appropriate for the treasurer to bring a report back to the council line those. I've captured the majority of those. And, and, and I can say that we do track the, um, the number of times that we rate the fees mm -hmm. and the value and so forth. That was something that we did with the community uh, development, the, the community grants policy yeah. that we had uh, a couple of years ago. So certain, I'm certain that the, the treasurer can give you an idea of the costs and, and, and answer all these questions. For you. And applying a meter at each of the inlets for all of those other places. Yeah. <laughs> And the basis. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda was the addition. Mr. Cameron uh, has an addition regarding the request from the Legion uh, and their patio. Yeah, if I may, I, I took the liberty of printing out a, a copy for uh, councillors so that uh, they have a copy of it. Uh, would you care to have one, Mr. Mayor? Everyone, indeed, yes. Well, uh, I have one, but he can have it when I'm when I'm finished <laughs> okay, with it. So, so no. uh, thank you very much, Mr. Yeah. Cameron. So I'll uh, read the letter. It's a uh, council approval for patio extension uh, for Americo Le Legion Branch Two Four Five. The Americo Legion is requesting an extension to our outdoor patio for a one-day event on August the sixth, twenty twenty-two. We are hosting the Provincial Legion Horseshoe Tournament. We would like to extend our patio section to include our parking lot at the back of the legion we will be setting up 16 por portable horseshoe pits in the parking lot and would like to have the area licensed we are asking municipal council to consider our request for a temporary extension of our existing licensed patio all the necessary precautions and safety requirements will be followed the area will be fenced this will be a significant event as players are take are arriving on friday august the 5th and we'll be staying overnight in the area. Players will be coming from all over the province to compete this competition. Legion members will be eating and possibly shopping in the community as well. We are seeking council approval in writing for this event in order to be following compliance with the AGCO letter non objection from the municipal clerk stating that there is no objection to the proposed extended license area. The extended area is 150 feet in length and 55 feet in width. Should you have any questions, and there's a contact information. And I'm just going to write on the top of, of this letter uh, today's date. And then I'll turn to staff and ask if this is something that this in the purview of, of council or we we'll just go to our uh, fire chief. So if I may, through you, so a number of thoughts. One is um, um, in, in the procedure problem, when something's addressed to council, there is a time limit before it would come forward to yeah. council. Um, this was raised with staff. It is a staff role, an administrative role for a fire chief and our chief building official to inspect properties when they have a liquor license and have requested uh, approval for an extension of something of this nature. Okay. Our fire chief and our CBO I know are, are working on this and have conducted inspections. And I believe there is another inspection that's, that's due coming up very shortly okay. um, to look at it. And it's really to make sure that the public safety is, is protected in terms of what is approved before is approved. But I'm, I'm a little cautious about discussing it too much further. We're sure recognizing that it is a liquor license uh, facility and it is an administrative role uh, with our fire chief and our chief building official under regulations to conduct the inspections. So I, I will say that I believe this came in and we have had some staff on vacation during this time as we go into the summer. We're going to encounter that in the wash course. Um, but I do believe that it is well in hand with the fire chief and the chief building official to conduct our inspections and to provide a, a response. Okay, so with that, I come to council. Uh, at some point, I, you're so I'm going to defer to the staff. I've asked the staff to remain in the waiting the waiting oh, room okay. to answer questions. They're both there. My understanding is that it is a comment back by staff, by the fire chief and the chief building official, but they're more knowledgeable in the process than I am. So if you don't mind, I'll defer defer to them. Just ask them to come in out of the waiting room. And... Thank you. 
but really chief call and uh, Mr. Holiday. I'm not sure which one of you would like to speak to this in terms of the process moving forward, whether it's whether uh, council are, are I'll say explicitly in, involved or this is totally a, a staff function. Um, I, I can speak to your worship if you're okay with that, uh, Dan. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so your worship, so so initially what would happen for, for an alcohol license, license would be an AGCO letter would be received by, by staff, by Dan and myself. Uh, we would do a, a formal inspection of the area to make sure there was enough uh, square footage to accommodate the amount of, of occupants they're asking for. Uh, we look for egress for fire. We look for uh, alarm systems. We look for fire rated doors. Um, all that kind of stuff, washroom capacity, all that stuff. Um, Dan can speak to that stuff a bit more than me, but uh, so what this is, is it's, they already have a liquor license, uh, your worship, and the patio is already licensed. So all they're asking for is an extension. So um, in the past, what this has been done by, by fire and by building is, uh, is another inspection by us just to make sure that the new area that they want to use, which is basically still attached to their patio, uh, is just safe and has the appropriate egress and can accommodate the uh, amount of uh, people they would like to have at the function. So in, in my experience, this would not need to go to council. It would still be at a staff level uh, to give the approval. Okay, so you're in, and uh, you're in the process of already dealing with the, uh, uh, working with the region going through the process? Uh, that is correct, Your Worship. There's already been one inspection done, and uh, there is actually another inspection tomorrow, which will hopefully be the final one. And, and with that, it, it will or will not move forward. That doesn't require any, any input or approval by council. Uh, that, that is correct, Your Worship. Yeah, I don't believe we would need any input by council. It would still remain at a staff level. Thank you very much. So uh, perhaps um, staff could con convey that we did receive uh, this letter this evening that brought forth to Cameron and that you're continuing continue, uh, to work with the region going through the process. Absolutely, Your Worship. Thank you very much. Let me just ask one point of clarification yeah. for staff's records. If, if I may, respond, just ask Councillor Cameron when he received the letter. Because yeah. there's no date on the letter. Yeah, I, I put today's date on only because of, it's on the table. Yeah. Um, I, I just received it a few days ago. Um, uh, the Legion was concerned that there was some uh, time uh, constraints. They, they're they trying to develop this uh, moving forward and they have a, a, a date and they have uh, an expectation of uh, uh, an increased amount of uh, people. It's a big tournament that they're yeah. hosting. Yeah. And they were just concerned uh, that, you know, they get the approval in time so that they would be able to have that time to develop uh, the property uh, as needed. Yeah. You know, they didn't, uh, they, they weren't sure, you know, when the process was going to be completed or not, or how the process was going to be moved forward. So they were concerned that you know if it was a last minute thing, they may only have a few days. I mean, they're they're in a position where they're relying on volunteers and they want to set this up to uh, move it forward. So well, they were, say, yeah, yeah. So they were just continue the conversation. Yeah, they just yeah. Okay. So they were just concerned that you know the the timelines were getting close and they weren't you know sure if they would be able to move forward or not. So I they guess wanted to just count count to count move that yeah. process. You know, since it's not a council process. So. Yeah. Well, anyway, thanks for the clarification. Uh, uh, fire chief and and uh, uh, just that you're continuing to work uh, with the uh, going through the process. So appreciate that very much. If I may, we're just in the future on something like this that is a staff function. I, I would ask rather than come to the open agenda, yeah. that the, the, the inquiry just simply be referred to staff. Yeah, that's great. Okay, thank you very much. Um, moving down, we don't have any preferred items. No questions from the public. And then, uh, Confirmatory bylaw. So they moved by Mr. Foster and second by Mr. Ireland. We hereby resolve that bylaw 33 2022 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the council meeting of June 27th, 2022. We read a first and second time the bylaw 33 2022. We read a third and final time will pass. All in favor. It's good. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. 
by Mr. Cameron and second by Mr. Foster be here and resolve that this regular meeting of the Council of the Corporation of the Village of America Wolford is now adjourned at 8.58 p.m. until the next meeting of Council on Monday, July 25th, 2022, or until the call of the Mayor subject to need. And before I call the vote, I wish everybody a very happy uh, Canada Day and a reminder to join us on uh, Wednesday evening at 6 o'clock over by the library to do some more uh, community walking for the uh, participation community challenge. Vote. I'll, I'll vote. All in favor of adjournment. Thank you very much. Thank you.